With Bellator announcing their Bellator 180 pay-per-view set for, I believe it's June 24th, uh, they also announced a couple new signings. So again, Lorenz Larkin is getting a title shot on that card. He's one of the new signings who was a UFC, not really a cast-off, but a, I guess just a guy who got a better offer from Bellator, but a, a UFC veteran. Uh, they also have Michael McDonald, a UFC veteran, who had a title shot with Henan Burrell at one point. Uh, was was a guy who was really talented, a guy who great punching power, pretty good jiu-jitsu. Really young at the time, too, when he had his title shot. Looked like a guy who could potentially grow into a great contender, but lost to some of the other top guys in the division, including Uriah Faber, and just kind of kind of got to a point where he's in a bit of purgatory, where he's just kind of floating around. Recently lost to John Lineker, so again, not getting his way all the way up to a title shot, but still a guy who you could definitely argue is towards the top 10, top 15 bantamweights in the world. So a great addition for Bellator to get there. They also got Ryan Bader right now. He looks to be setting up a fight with Phil Davis, who's the champion. That'd be a good opportunity for him to win a Bellator belt. I think that's a fight he can definitely win. I believe he won the first fight that those two had. And then outside of that, you've, you've got some of the more recent signings, or I guess less recent signings, with Rory McDonald, who hasn't had his debut yet. He's been trying to get his nose healed up. But it sounds like he's getting ready to step into the cage soon. And then Benson Henderson, who's had a few fights, former UFC champion, who's also signed with Bellator. And it looks like with WME, they're getting to a point where they're, as much as we gave the Fertitta owned and Ziff owned UFC a lot of crap for how they handled the UFC and how they handled signing a lot of these guys, they were still kind of fight fans and they were, they were making deals here and there that were more just kind of like out of respect for guys than it was as far as what's best for business. Uh, they're, if you were one of their guys, you'd get a good amount of money from them and they really cared about being the the organization had the best fighters in the world, and that was something that they strived to do. I mean, they had some talks with Fedor to give him some ridiculous money at, at the time when he was free, or when he was freed up. So it, it sucks in a way that you're seeing these kinds of guys leave. You were kind of worried about WME IMG kind of turning the UFC into more of an event business where they're just trying to go card to card and set up all these money fights instead of doing what's best for the sport and letting these kinds of guys walk like your Lorenz Larkin, like a Ryan Bader in a light heavyweight division right now, where you kind of have your top four with Gus, Rumble, uh, DC, and John Jones, but all these guys have already fought each other aside from Rumble and Jones fighting. And once that fight happens, and it's kind of like where you're just kind of spinning them back and forth until someone else gets through, whether that's Manoa, who's fought two of those guys already and lost, or whether you're hoping Misha Serkinov, who they almost let go, whether you're hoping that he's the kind of guy who can work his way in. But Ryan Bader was another guy in there where there were a few fights you could have put him in in the top four. He had some pretty big wins with that huge flying knee over Alir Latifi. So let him go. That's obviously not... When you're not re-signing Ryan Bader, it's not because you're trying to keep the best light heavyweight division in the world and be the place where all the best fighters are. It's because you're looking at what he's asking for and deciding, hey, he's he's not going to draw enough to make this worth it. And to an extent, from a business standpoint, that makes sense. What we saw in the past with Strike Force is they were signing a lot of guys to some pretty high contracts, and that ended up and cuffing them, their investment group, which I believe, I can't remember what their name was. I know they were investing with the Sharks, or they were the ownership group with the San Jose Sharks, too. They, they ended up cutting bait, and that's when the UFC bought out Strike Force. So that that was a problem for them then. You would hope that that isn't going to happen again with Bellator now, where Viacom, yes, they have a lot of money, but they're like any other business that they're saying that the Bellator unit's losing money. They're going to look to cut bait on them, too. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean that you're okay with losing a lot of money if you're if you have a business venture that isn't working. So... I would hope that the money that they're putting in towards guys like Larkin and Bader end up coming back to them. You'd hope that those kind of guys can draw for them and end up being successful. It'd also be interesting to see what other guys head over now because, again, we just had a week where we had three pretty high-profile guys, all guys who were top 15 guys, if not better, that went from the UFC to Bellator. You're having a lot of these fighters, like Joe Duffy even, who's letting his contract run out. I'm very interested to see what Bellator's strategy is going to be on this, whether they just want to sign every top 15 fighter that frees up, how much they're going to pay, what the UFC does as far as keeping guys around. Even like Amisha Serkinov, it was pretty worrisome to see that they would be willing to let him go. It sounds like he was getting pretty aggressive. I don't think he had an agent. It was just him and Mick Maynard kind of going back and forth on that. But again, these are the kinds of guys that you want to have in your divisions, especially if you're the UFC and you're claiming that you have the best fighters in the world for Bellator. I don't know what their end goal is if they want to eventually become the Premier League where they want to have the best fighters in the world. If that's their goal, do these signings make the most sense for them to grow that way? Do you want to kind of help grow guys in the meantime? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, I they they aren't like letting their budgets free. I don't know how much money they're hemorrhaging or whether they're making a lot of money right now. It seems like 
putting a lot of money into these guys where the UFC isn't even matching them could be dangerous for him. You don't want him to go down the strike force route, but from a fan standpoint, from a hardcore fan standpoint, I'm certainly more interested in Bellator now. I, I mean, like I said before, that De- or, um, not Diego Lima, um, the, the Lima versus Larkin fight, that's that's a fight that really interests me a lot, and it's going to be a fun fight to watch. And I'm sure that Ryan Bader's going to have some good fights, whether it's with Phil Davis, uh, will you put him in with Liam McGeary, some of the other guys they have. Uh, maybe they'll bring over some other UFC guys that'll have some good UFC veteran on UFC veteran matches, or maybe a UFC veteran on highly ranked Bellator guy matchups. Uh, obviously, the welterweight division's gotten really strong now. Michael Venom Page was a guy we were sort of waiting to see where he could go. It seemed like he was being groomed to become the champion, but now with all the top UFC guys coming in, even like Lorenz Larkin, um, is Page ever going to get to a point where he can beat those kind of guys? When's he going to get to a point where we're even going to see him against those kind of guys? So with these divisions beefing up, especially the welterweight division, there's a lot that can go on now. It'll be interesting to see how the business does on this end, but it'll also be interesting to see the competitive side because there are going to be some really good fights that Bellator is going to be putting on. Hopefully the hardcore fans are going to know about it, and hopefully some casual fans are going to see it too.